how did the results come out? So let's look at True Diagnostic first. This is the one that surprised me the most, and it surprised me because of the huge variation. Again, remember, exactly the same biological sample. In fact, for the tests that used blood, they came from exactly the same tube. The two results for their, their omic M age, which is their primary epigenetic age uh, report, were 60.73 years and 47.80 years. They kind of span my true chronological age, which was 53.51. Again, really surprised me that they were so far apart. Um, I'll come back and talk about that in a few minutes. The next one was tally health. Again, these two were very close together. So 61 years, zero months, 59 years, 10 months. This is a saliva-based test. So their precision, again, only two replicates, but reasonably good, I guess, a almost two years difference between the uh, the two tests. Again, remember though, this is exactly the same sample. So a two-year variance for exactly the same sample, you know, is that good? I don't know. Elysium, also two years, but now on the other side of my chronological age, 45 and 43. So I, I don't know if we can draw any patterns at this point, other than there doesn't really appear to be a pattern, right? So True diagnostic flanked my chronological age, tally health, two years apart, but above my chronological age, Elysium, two years apart, but below my chronological age. And then that 0.87 that they report here for rate of aging, I'm guessing that's the, the Dunedin Pace uh, rate of aging metric. Um, and I'll come back and talk about that from the true diagnostic results in a, in a minute. Okay. And then the fourth test was this MUDO. Again, this one was actually really close together, 56.6 and 56.2. So precision looks pretty good. Again, a little bit above my chronological age. So if we look at the summary statistics, again, two technical replicates times four companies, there's a few different ways you can look at this. Very simple, true chronological age, 53.1. Mean epigenetic age across all tests, 53.8. So I guess we can say if you take the test eight times, you can get pretty close to your chronological age, but the standard deviation is enormous. So 7.4 years across these eight replicates for standard deviation. Um, so it's kind of noisy. And if we look at this in a graphical way, you can see the spread around the true chronological age. Again, we don't know if the true chronological age is the true biological age is the true epigenetic age, but again, based on the other health information that we've got, it seems unlikely that the true biological age is much greater than the true chronological age and might be a little bit less. Okay. Now we can also look at this based on the uh, color coded by the companies. Again, you can see there's pretty good spread sort of all over the place in terms of where the individual results come back. But in average, they get pretty close to the true chronological age. So my interpretation of this is that these Epigenetic age tests across the industry as a whole are more noise than signal. And I don't think, based on this, from a single replicate, you can really conclude anything useful. Knowing that, if you were to take the test eight times, you might get a spread like this, which looks more or less normally distributed around the chronological age. So I'm not aware of anybody else doing this. If other people have, I'd love to see the data. We can compare the data. Um, but to me, this is pretty clear. There's a lot of noise in the system. I will say my Dunedin Pace score over this time frame has been less than one, meaning that, that I should have been aging biologically at a rate less than the passage of chronological time, which doesn't explain the sort of wild variation in aging rate that we see here. Okay, so... What can we conclude? Um, again, I think there's some major problems clearly in the direct-to-consumer biological age testing industry, and I've, I've hit those. I think the conflicts of interest are real. I think the lack of transparency around quality control, variation um, in uh, tests, and I think the results of this experiment clearly point out that there are real issues and that it is very, very difficult for me to have confidence that you can get signal from the noise, certainly not based on a single test at any given time. I'm not convinced it's much better than 
a random normal distribution around chronological age at this point. And unfortunately, it seems like the industry, at least to date, is unable to self-regulate. So I'd really encourage the folks at these companies, and I know many of them are really well-intentioned, to start providing some transparency into quality control, replicability, and remove the conflicts of interest where they are selling tests and then also selling other products, particularly supplements or other interventions that um, are sold based on the results of the tests. Um, I think that just creates way too much opportunity for abuse. I also have to ask to the scientists who are, you know, plastering their faces on these tests, what are you thinking? <laughs> uh, is the money worth it? Um, what sort of message are you sending to your graduate students, your postdocs, your trainees, when you are endorsing this kind of noise, scientific, lack of scientific noise. Um, I, I, I don't get it personally. And I just have to ask, like, is it really worth the damage to your reputation? I don't know. Maybe it is. Um, for the consumers, again, for you, I'd really recommend that you carefully consider you know, why is it that you believe whatever it is you believe about these tests? If you believe they work, if you believe they're telling you something about your health, why do you believe that? If you find these tests to be motivational, that they help you practice a healthy lifestyle, you know, think more about the pillars of health, great, fantastic. If they create stress, not so fan fantastic. And I will say, you know, even though as a scientist, I can look at this data and go, this looks like random noise. The fact that so many of my tests came out on the wrong side of my chronological age, right? Saying that I'm, you know, epigenetically older than my chronological age, even though the rational part of my mind is like, you can't conclude anything from that. The emotional part of me is like, shit, I wonder if I'm actually, you know, biologically older than I should be, despite the fact that I'm doing all this stuff to try to improve my health. And despite the fact that my biomarkers, my functionality is going in the right direction. That's not a great thing for health span. And so if these tests are creating any sort of anxiety or any sort of negative reinforcement, again, really encourage you to think about, is it worth it? Given that they probably aren't telling you anything real at all. And also I'd speculate that Given the, the results that I got, a lot of these influencers who are sharing their biological age data out there, these rejuvenation Olympics, they may just be sharing the data that they want you to see. If you take the same test three, four times, I suspect, based on what I saw, you might be able to get the number that you want. You know, it wouldn't shock me if some of these folks are leaving out the results that don't fit their narrative. In fact, if I, instead of showing you the results that I showed you today, wanted you to believe that my protocol is a great protocol, I could have just shown you my Elysium results. I didn't do that, but you might want to wonder whether some of these folks would do that. Are they doing that? I don't know the answer, but it wouldn't surprise me. So for now, personally, again, I think about whether these tests are useful to you. Are they motivating you? Are they creating anxiety? Why do you believe them? Why don't you believe them? And I'd put much more faith in the things that we know are informative about biological age and health, the pillars of health, eat, move, sleep, connect. Biomarkers that have years, sometimes decades of clinical evidence to support them, large-scale epidemiological studies. And for now, I'd largely ignore the direct-to-consumer epigenetic age test, especially in isolation. I think it's an open question. Will these tests have value when combined with a much larger data set? I'm hopeful, and I'm hopeful that they will get better. But at this point, I'm not sure. I say it's still an open question. <laughs>